Keep your skin clean. <laughs> And welcome to another intriguing It's a Mystery, where we attempt to solve all kinds of mysteries, from the super spooky to the wonderfully weird. <laughs> now, on this week's show, our two mystery investigators, Shelley Blonde and Ben Jones, help to get to the bottom of some of the most unbelievable stories you're ever likely to hear. We discover what bizarre incidents caused the evacuation of a major international airport. And how can a man see someone that's there one minute and gone the next? And we reveal for the first time on national television the identity of an amazing creature which can live in solid rock. Do you know what? Some of the best mystery stories happen to be those with the most bizarre explanations. And it's amazing how two totally unconnected incidents can have a common twist. So, it's a mystery how these quite different stories are related. And believe me, they don't come weirder than this one. Keith Allen worked for Sweet Toys, a well-known confectionery and toy wholesaler in the Northwest. Every morning he'd load up his van with all sorts of goodies, delivering to shops and businesses in the local town. One of the first stops on his busy round was at a nearby zoo. The zoo sold lots of his company's products in the souvenir shop. I'll put the delivery around the back. Just sign for it, that'd be great. Sure. Yes. There you go. Cheers. Is it okay to have a look at the snakes? Of course you can. You always do. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Paulie. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Keith was a real animal lover. Often, whilst making his deliveries, he would stop to look at the animals. He was especially keen on the exotic snakes. Keith spent a few minutes marvelling at the wonderful creatures before going back to his van and going off to his next delivery. Keith was driving along when he heard a weird noise coming from the back of the van. He pulled into the side of the road and opened the back doors to investigate. It was like a dull rattling and ticking noise, and it was coming from the vicinity of his bag. Within a split second, he thought he knew what was making the noise. Scared out of his mind, he backed as far away as he could from the van. Hmm. So, OK, a delivery man is doing his normal rounds when he hears a noise that scares him. So what was it? And how could it be related to this? Meanwhile, a few hundred miles away at the Southern International Airport, Mr and Mrs Owens and their two children are at the checking in desk, getting ready for the holiday of a lifetime in Marbella. Are you sure you turned the water off? Can't I have, pet? Oh, for goodness sake, Susan, will you just stop worrying? They were on their way to departures, getting more excited by the minutes, when they heard something which made them stop dead in their tracks. I'm afraid you're going to have to come with me. This is a security announcement. A strange ticking noise coming from a piece of the Owens luggage had created a major security this alert. This is a security announcement. Can we all make their way out of the building, please? It is possible. Come on, quickly. That's it, just through there. Just over there, love. Quickly, quickly. Everyone, out of the building, please. At the same time, over 200 miles away, Keith Allen was still terrified because he thought a rattlesnake had escaped from the zoo and got into his van. Hmm. A terrified man backs away from his van because he thinks he can hear a rattlesnake that's escaped from the zoo in amongst his packages. And then, a few hundred miles away, an entire airport is evacuated because of a strange ticking noise coming from a piece of the Owens luggage that's suspected to be a bomb. So, OK, what have they possibly got in common? Well, in both cases, someone heard something which sparked off a panic reaction. In both cases, the noise was actually created not by a rattlesnake or a bomb, but by a package in amongst Keith Allen's deliveries and a box of toys in the Owens luggage 
full of these things. Mexican jumping beans. They're beans which move about and sort of jump. And they were discovered years ago and became an incredibly popular toy. In the spring, a Mexican moth lays eggs in the flower of a particular tree. The flowers turn into seed pods, which have still got eggs inside them. The eggs then grow into caterpillars, and when the pod falls off the trees, with the wriggling caterpillar still inside and alive, well, this is what makes the pods move. The pods jump about like this, and if they knock against each other, they can appear to tick. Because the caterpillar is fed by the bean, it can live up to half a million jumps. So, as the caterpillar wriggles around, it could sound a bit like a rattlesnake or even a ticking bomb, causing all that confusion in the airport and in the back of the van. Oh, who'd have thought that such a tiny little thing like this could cause such confusion and commotion? Still, mystery solved. <laughs> Hello, my name is Bob Prowse and I live in Hawkehurst in Kent. I had a shock recently when I saw someone who wasn't there. It was one o'clock on a Saturday morning. I'd had a great night out and I was driving along the lanes towards home. All of a sudden, I entered a stretch of road where there were no lights. I switched my lights on the full beam and began to speed up. I could see the road was completely empty in front of me. I drove for about 200 meters. There in front of me, appearing as if by magic in the middle of the road, was a man. He was very tall, with blonde hair, and wearing blue clothing. He didn't seem scared that I was heading straight for him. In fact, he looked very relaxed, with his hands by his sides. By this time, I was traveling very fast indeed. With a split second reaction, I managed to swerve out of his way. I veered to the edge of the road and nearly crashed into a hedge. I managed to swerve back into the center of the road. As I did so, I checked my wing mirrors to see if the man was okay. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was no one there. Incredible stuff. A man appears instantly in the middle of an empty road. It's okay. What's going on? Could it be a ghost? Or could Bob Prowse be seeing things? What do you think? Well, we've done some research and found there have been some pretty spooky goings on very close to the spot where Bob Prowse saw the ghostly apparition. The Royal Oak Hotel in Hawkehurst is said to be haunted by a ghost called George, who has been reported to wander through the staff quarters of the hotel. Could it be George that wandered onto the road that night? Or is there a more likely explanation? Well, some experts reckon that many night ghost sightings are really just optical illusions caused by night blindness. Shapes can be easily mistaken in a car's headlights so that a person believes they are seeing something that isn't really there. It's a bit like this. If you look at this hat stand, it definitely looks like a hat stand, doesn't it? But if we dim the lights, it could easily be a spooky man in a coat and hat. So maybe all that was seen on that fateful night was an overhanging branch or a trick of the light. What do you think? Well, Bob Prowse is sure that he saw something more sinister than an overhanging branch. I've never believed in ghosts before, but this has made me think differently. <laughs> Have you ever found something really weird when you least expect it? Well, it's a mystery how you can find the strangest things in the most unexpected places. Many years ago, a lady called Mrs. Walker was going about her daily chores. She was carrying a heavy sack of coal along a path when a large lump of coal fell out onto the ground and cracked. Mrs. Walker sighed, lowered the bag of coal, and bent down to pick it up. Goodness me! What on earth is that? Sam! What is it, Mum? Mrs. Walker had noticed something strange hidden in the pieces of coal. She blinked in disbelief as she tried to take in the sight before her. To her utter surprise, there was a toad wedged into the cavity in the large block of coal. It's a toad? 
However did that get there? Is it dead? No, I felt it twitch. Look, Mother, you can still see the shape of a toad in the coal. Sam and his mother placed the toad in a shady part of the garden, and after a few hours, well, it seemed to revive. They watched contentedly as it hopped away into the bushes. A live toad jumping out of a lump of coal? <laughs> Sounds impossible, doesn't it? OK, let's take a look at the facts. Now, the toad was found buried within a lump of coal, and yet there was no visible hole through which it could have crawled. Now, coal is found in layers running through rock deep below the ground. So how would the toad have survived buried at a depth of hundreds of metres? Well, no one seems to have put forward a watertight explanation. And you may well be thinking that this could be some old wives' tale that's been exaggerated with time. But it's not the only story of its kind. It was just an ordinary Tuesday morning for Scott Bailey and his team of construction workers. They were making improvements to an old stretch of road and they just uncovered some old gas pipes that were causing a few problems. How you going shifting that rubble, Mark? Yeah, getting there. Slowly. Oh, my word. Lads, take a look at this. Charlie looked up from his clipboard and made his way over to where Scott was working. He lowered himself into the hole and leaned over to where Charlie was pointing. And the sight before him made his jaw drop in disbelief. Buried in the concrete was a frog's leg. He got the other workmen to carefully cut around the block so the frog could be released from its concrete prison. Hey, did you see that? No. What? It blinked. I swear it's eye move. You're going soft. Hey, look at this. I don't believe it. Incredibly, there were 23 other frogs trapped behind the first one. And what's more, they were all hopping and bouncing like they'd never been trapped. Ha ha ha! So once again, we have a story of live frogs found deep in concrete with no holes through which they could have crawled. Well, I suppose it's just possible that tiny tadpoles could have got into the original concrete mixture, but then how would they have had room to grow into frogs once it's set? And how would the frogs have survived the mixing of the concrete and all those poisonous chemicals? What do you think? Now, Ben, for every theory someone puts forward, there seems to be just as many questions. Well, there sure are, but to try and get to the bottom of this mystery, I've been doing some research of my own into the phenomena of live frogs found in stone. It's been hard, but I spoke to Matt Fagg at London Zoo, and he told me that every year, frogs and toads bury themselves in secret places, where they spend the winter with no food. Ah, ah, yeah, but that doesn't explain how they can end up encased in rock or stone, because let's face it, rock takes millions of years to form, so surely it would be impossible for the frogs to survive. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But it hasn't been the only case of frogs found in weird places. In fact, records even show that a frog has been found inside an old tree stump, and there's even tales that frogs have been found inside large hailstones, which you have to admit, is pretty incredible. But the reason as to how they got there? Well, that still remains a complete mystery to this day. Well, we're completely baffled. There seems to be no obvious answers. Have you got an explanation? If not, mystery unsolved. <laughs> So there you go, yet again, we've taken a look at some amazing and weird mysteries. <laughs> but plenty more remain for us to solve, so we'll see you next week. But until then, here's something for you to think about. When a man walked into a cafe and ordered a cup of tea, a lemonade and a Bakewell tart, the waitress realised that he was a policeman. How on earth could she have worked that out? What do you think? I'll see you next time. Oh, more spooky tales, and it's a mystery on Thursday on CITV. Oh yes, now if you're watching closely, then you should know the answer to our win on the box question, which is, what did Keith Allen ask to look at in the zoo? What did Keith Allen ask to look at in the zoo? If you think you know, then you've still got time to enter the numbers on your screen. 0901 0707 123, 0901 0707 123. Ask the mission and dial carefully. Now I've got an email here from a Nitsa Mystery.